Diageo Fast Forward is a technology company. What we tend, what, one of our uh, key products is around robotics, um, and it's all about uh, being a people augmented robotics uh, uh, type of company. So the robots that we create are to help people. Uh, navigate their day-to-day -day lives and improve their day-to-day -day lives, not uh, take away certain functionalities and things that they like. Uh, Jeter is one of the uh, robots that we, we uh, produce, and that is a, a really a way to be uh, augmenting someone's natural walking life and uh, to be able to carry uh, things so that a person is more willing to go outdoors and enjoy their their surroundings. Uh, we also now are expanding into other areas, which is a following unit, which allows um, other robotics companies to take advantage of the following and very unique following uh, that we've been able here to develop at PFF. So um, we are even looking at ways to take other robots for the similar uh, environments and just make them also have the same following capabilities as well. And we've expanded into radar systems that now work on automobiles for our parent company. So um, we are going in a multitude of directions and we have even more robotics uh, platforms that we're trying to develop for uh, later this year as well. So it's really an exciting time here because there's so many different avenues uh, for people to be able to explore and do. So uh, my particular team um, is about uh, 12 people um, in scope, and we are so diverse and, uh, and uh, unique. So um, the team that I uh, work on is the platform for these robot and vehicles. So we create all the platform, uh, the basic the platform where the sensor team would then give us their application and we productize it. So that is one group uh, underneath me. I also have the, uh, the team that for mobile app development. So a lot of our vehicles and our uh, services uh, utilize the mobile app and we do all our mobile app development here as well. Uh, the cloud team is also a part of group. Our robots talk into these uh, uh, to the cloud environments. We can do updates uh, remotely uh, over the time, so we can always continuously improve uh, these uh, these uh, robots out in the field. So customers are not stuck from the day of purchase with that functionality. We are continuously looking to uh, augment and add more and more functionality to them, and. Uh, with the cloud team and the mobile team, we can do that. I also have a group um, that uh, works on the radar systems that I just mentioned about for the vehicles. So we develop a lot of the radar systems that run on a motorcycle. Um, you know, a lot of the functionality people look at and say, oh, that exists. It exists for a car, but a motorcycle is completely different when you think of dynamics and how uh, they work. Now, leaning and turning, to, you know, it, is different. In a car, you turn a steering wheel. On a motorcycle, you lean with a slight turn. That changes a lot of the dynamics, and um, and we have a very um, unique team to be able to look at these type of dynamics and take technology uh, that exists for a vehicle and adapted for a motorcycle. So I got that particular group, which has uh, been a very exciting two years with them. And uh, the uh, last group that I have that works with me is uh, one of the group the things that we work on is the mobile apps for all of the uh, Piaggio groups or vehicles. So if you look at their brands, Vespa, Moto Guzzi, Aprilia, the Piaggio brand, we make all the mobile apps for that work with those vehicles as well. So. Um, uh, it has been great because uh, as people come on board, um, you know, we can rotate people through this, these um, different projects. So it's not like a boring thing. It's always, it feels like you're working at a, a new company all the time. So it keeps things fresh and going. The high level look at the tech stack is gonna vary on, on the, uh, the products that we're talking about here. Uh, but um, most of, uh, if you we're talking about the robot, uh, we are a C um, and Linux house. So our robots use C and Linux. Um, and um, that is where we start off with. And then of course we build the application on top of those and we uh, have to be able to, to work off the robot. Um, 
our radar systems are of course C and our, our cloud is uh, pretty much the full complement uh, of, of software. Uh, we do Node.js, um, we do CloudFormation, uh, we utilize a lot of the AWS infrastructures as well. So, um, you know, we, we touch on a quite a bit of area. So there's a lot of things uh, that, uh, that's what makes us interesting to a lot of different developers is, you know, we'll use Python, we use Python, we use, um, uh, bash script when needed um, you know and there are areas where we'll go into C++ um, you know we try to stay as much standardized to the product because it makes it much easier in there um, but when the need calls for it we will open up our technology stack to be able to take in something else um, you know ROS right now uh, we do utilize um, ROS nodes uh, in our current applications just because you know it, to adapt into uh, the following unit that I mentioned earlier that a, someone can add to their robot to be able to get the uh, technology of following um, most of the robots that we're seeing in that particular field utilize ROS so of course we will use a ROS stack to be able to go with it so um, I like to think of us as open-minded in the sense that we do have guidelines that we want to stay in but let's not be afraid to explore technologies and, and where where they need to fit and not force fit what we want is what the space calls for. Let's figure out how to adapt. So the interview process um, varies for certain departments, but a lot of things that we try to do here is um, the interview process usually starts off as a first round with the uh, recruiter. And then from the recruiter, uh, we'll usually work uh, toward trying to get the manager involved. Uh, the manager will then down select to a smaller group that we try to expose to, uh, you know, for my, for my group, I try to expose to different members of my team. And the whole point that I'm looking for is I will involve these people because um, we don't necessarily work in a single silo. Uh, as you can see, the, the team that I have is very vast and we utilize work with IT and other groups as well. So I may ask other people to join the interview process. What I want to make sure is a lot of people look at fit. Um, fit is a small piece of what I, I think probably the smallest piece that I look for. I also, I look for compliments. Um, you know, the whole point of an organization is that you want to build a skill set that's multi-diverse uh, so that no matter what challenges coming through it, there is someone on your team with the skill set to help you achieve those goals. Uh, so that's why I say fit is small, but augmentation is big. So we always look for people that add a different perspective, a different view, a different technology. Um, and a different approach uh, so that I think throughout our organization, we can take on whatever challenges come and someone is always there. And to tell you the truth, I've been here now for almost uh, five years and um, we faced a lot of problems, but there was always someone in here that knew how to, you know, what the right way to attack it is. And and I think that's what's, what's great is that everyone gets involved. If there's a problem, it's all in. You know, and we all get in and, and I think by making us more dynamic like that, that we're complementing each other, that there's always a skill set to help us solve it. I think what, what uh, makes us very unique is that we're not trying to build the same exact thing. I know there's a lot of robotics companies out there that just build robots. That's not our, um, our DNA. Our DNA is to really look at how we build devices and products that complement um, a person's lifestyle. So those approaches cause us to kind of look at problems a multitude of ways. Um, and I think why a person would want to look at PFF is that you're gonna find very unique ways to try to solve uh, problems that other companies won't look at. Plus we are very uh, multi-diverse in different product areas so it's not like you're going to be building the same thing over and over again right um, you know someone that you know you know works on an appliance let's say a coffee maker next year is going to make another coffee maker is going to make another coffee maker that's not pff um, currently right now we have the Cheeto robots we're 
augmented our, our roadmap now to include um, giving capabilities to other types of robots that are more unique for a field. And the robot that we're uh, looking to release by the end of this year is going to be different than the Gino robot. And it's going to do, uh, it's going to solve some other issues for our, you know, um, our B2B customers as well. So um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's never building the same exact thing. We're not looking to build that and then cost it down, build that, cost it down, build that. We are always looking to say, what is the technology that we need to solve these problems in the field? And we, uh, it's always going to be something new and different for someone.